Today I'm going to be doing a quick installation and first look at the recently released Deepin 20.1. Deepin is a Chinese-based Linux distribution. It is based on Debian. The current version, Deepin 20.1, is based on Debian 10.6. And Deepin has always been one of those distributions that I often install on friends and family computers. I've actually had Deepin running on some of my test laptops in years past. And I've always liked Deepin as a distribution. And I've always liked the Deepin desktop environment. I think it is maybe the most modern, most attractive, uh, the most Windows-like uh, desktop environment we have available in Linux. I, I think it's one of those distributions and one of those desktop environments that we should be showing potential new Linux users because I think it's one of those desktop environments that has a wow factor. Like people that don't know anything about Linux, you know, you don't want to show them XFCE because that's that's not attractive. That's not exciting. But the Deepin desktop environment has a real wow factor that has always impressed me. And typically when I put it on friends and family computers, they really love Deepin. And it's proved to be a, a rather stable distribution on all the machines I've ever put it on. So today I wanted to take a look at this new release and the release announcement over here at uh, distrowatch.com. If you go to the Deepin website, you'll also find the release announcement. The Deepin website, of course, is in Chinese, so uh, you will have to change the language by default. It's in Chinese, but you can switch over to English here. Uh, the website's loading a little slowly, and of course we have the 20.1 release announcement here. The website, of course, is deepin.org. I will actually link to this release announcement in the show description. Today I'm going to be doing a quick installation and first look at Deepin inside a VM. I'm going to install Deepin 20.1 inside Vert Manager. So let me switch over to my desktop here, and again, this is a, a VM here, so this is inside Vert Manager, and I'm going to go ahead and run through the installation. I haven't actually done an installation of Deepin in a while, so I don't know if the installation process has changed, if the installer has changed since the last time I've done this. One thing to note here is I do know the installer recommends you have at least 64 gigs of disk space to install Deepin. Now that's way overkill. You, there's no way that a Deepin installation is going to install 64 gigs of stuff. <laughs> but just know that the installer will check for that. So I did create a, uh, uh, I think a 70 gig of virtual hard drive for this virtual machine just to be on the safe side, just to make sure that I don't... Uh, come to that portion of the installer and then get prevented from going further in the installation because the disk is too small. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is select your language. By default, it'll be uh, Chinese. So you want to select English or whatever language it is that you want the installer to actually present. And then you need to agree to the Deepin OS user experience program license agreement. It's just a, a end user license agreement. You also need to read their privacy policy and agree to that. And then click next and then you are installing Deepin on a virtual machine which may result in suboptimal performance for the best experience please install Deepin on a real machine this has always been a part of the installer it always detects whether you're doing this in a VM or on real hardware if you're doing it in a VM it's going to tell you hey performance is not going to be good in a VM and the reason is uh, Deepin is kind of a heavy desktop environment it uses a ton of system resources and it, it can be slow and buggy in a VM so it's just warning you guys if you're doing it in a VM don't expect the best performance which is understandable now creating the partitions so it's going to detect your disk now in this VM I only have one virtual disk here I need to select it and then it's going to do the automatic partitioning because I selected full disk here and the automatic partitioning is going to do a boot partition that is two gigs. It's going to do slash data, which is 16 gigs, I guess, for recovery. Um, yeah, we'll just go with it. We'll just do the automatic partitioning. Of course, if you really wanted to, you could manually partition the drives yourself and then click continue and it should format the drives and start writing to the disk and we get a progress bar here at the bottom and i believe this is where it actually starts the installation so i will pause the recording and i'll come back once this portion of the installation has completed and that portion of the installation has completed that took i don't know five minutes maybe ten minutes at the most and now we need to reboot the system and it has this button at the bottom reboot now so i'll click that and it automatically detached the uh, the ISO, so I didn't need to actually go in and remove the ISO from the VM. It took care of that automatically. I always like when distributions do that. We had a grub screen that came up too. So the installation appears to have went just fine. 
All right, and now we're back at the installer, but this time it looks like we have different things to go through. So again, English has been selected. It remembered English from me going through it before, but now we are going to select our keyboard layout, time zone, and all of that. Once again, we have to agree to the end user license agreement. Click next. Keyboard layout, I want English US, which is selected by default, I guess, since I chose English in the previous screen. I'm going to click next on that. We need to select our time zone. I am in the central U.S., so I'm just going to click somewhere here in the central part of the U.S. Chicago is not exactly where I'm at, but it is the same time zone, so I will click next. Create an account. I'm going to create a username here. I'm going to call it the user DT. The host name for the computer can be DT-PC. That's what's su suggested here. That's fine. Password. We need to create a strong and complicated password for privacy reasons, so... We create a strong and complicated password. It says, please input a username longer than three characters and shorter than 32 characters. So it's fine with the password being two characters, but the username can't be just two characters. That's weird. I don't think I've ever installed a Linux distribution that didn't allow me to use DT as the username. But hey, since it doesn't like DT, we'll go with Derek. And let's go ahead and click next. It says, tuning the system, applying changes to your system. Please wait. All right, and the system, I, I guess, rebooted itself. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but the installation program disappeared, and all of a sudden we get to our login manager. So let's go ahead and log in to Deepin 20.1. Friendly reminder, it's been detected that we're using a virtual machine, and this will imp impact uh, system performance. So do you want to turn off the effects? So if you turn on effect mode, it has fancy effects, and it's really going to slow down the VM. Or do you want to do normal mode? Normal mode is probably what we need to do in a VM. Now, on physical hardware, the effects mode is, is probably fine for most uh, most computers out there, unless it's a really old computer that just has a, a complete potato for a CPU. Now, before I do anything else, the first thing I want to do is get a proper screen resolution. So I'm going to search for display about monitor, system monitor. No, how about resolution? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I could always just open up a terminal, but I was trying to stick with their graphical programs here. So let me just open up a terminal and I'll run an XRander and the available screen resolutions for the xrander command 1920 by 1080 is available so i will do xrander space dash s space 1920 by 1080. i'm sure there's a graphical program to change resolutions somewhere in deepen but i wouldn't know where it was at because just searching for screen monitor display uh, I, I didn't get anything returned in the search box here so uh, it, I'm not uh, familiar enough with the Deepin desktop environment to know exactly the program I'm looking for there. Now getting into Deepin, one of the first things you notice is it is a quite attractive desktop environment. I do like the panel at the bottom, I like the icon set. I, I don't know if I'm crazy about the space around the panel, because you see there is like a 20 pixel padding or so around the edges of the panel and at the bottom of the panel, so it's not really butted up against the edge of the screen. I'm sure I could change that. If I right click on it, we have mode. This is fashion mode that's ticked on. If I go to efficient mode, ah, uh, yeah, then it butts up right against the edge of the screen like a traditional panel. That's kind of what I would prefer there. It also got rid of the centered uh, quick launcher icons and actually put them closer to the actual start menu. Th this makes a lot more sense to me, but if, for those of you that prefer the other way, I mean, you can quickly toggle between that uh, fashion mode and efficient mode for the panel. Now we do have this little welcome program here. So let me go ahead and click next. And I, I, I immediately we could have changed it from fashion mode to efficient mode just using this, but we've already taken care of that. Uh, yeah, it's just letting us know a little bit about what we can change as far as uh, the system themes, the icon set. I'm okay with the default icon set. If I go through the, uh, the start menu here, yeah, that default icon set looks good. Uh, I don't know if I would change that. So yeah, I'm just going to close out the little help program. The first thing I want to do is go through the menu system and see what all is installed by default. Because again, Deepin 
recommended that you had at least 64 gigs of disk space to be able to install Deepin. That is gigantic. That is probably 10 times the amount of disk space most distributions actually need to install. And I don't think Deepin really needs 64 gigs of disk space. I, I think that was a gross overestimation <laughs> of what it actually needs. So let's go through the categories here. Can I actually search by category? It says all categories. Okay, there we go. And then I can do the subcategories. We have an internet category where we have browser and mail. It doesn't tell me what browser or email client we have installed because it's using generic names. I hate generic names. Now that's part of the problem why uh, searching in something like the search box could be a problem because if it doesn't search for the program name, but instead search for the, like the generic label, like browser, you know, if I was searching for Firefox, it may not return Firefox, but I actually have to search for browser to actually make that search happen. I don't even know if this is Firefox here though. What browser are we using? Now, I'm not familiar with this at all. So let me go to the about section. This is actually Chrome colon dash dash setting. So it's a Chrome based browser at least, but I don't know. This might be Chrome. I, I've never used Chrome. I mean, I don't know anything about it, but this is not what I would expect Chrome to look like. I would expect the about page to actually tell me something about Chrome. It says this browser is made possible by the Chromium open source project and other open source software. So it's talking about open source software. So it's not Google Chrome. So it's uh, some open source variant of Chrome, maybe Chromium. I don't know. Uh, again, it would be better if I could actually get the name of that program instead of just browser. If I really wanted to look it up. What I could do is I could open a terminal. And if I assume it's Chromium, what I could do is do a where is and then Chromium. And if Chromium is installed, it would tell me where the binary for Chromium is. I didn't get anything returned, though, so it may not be Chromium. I tried to launch Chromium by just typing Chromium. Yeah, I'm not sure what that browser is. Let me get back into the menu system, go back to all categories, go to Internet. I'm going to choose the mail client. I expect the email client to also be difficult to figure out what's going on. We have... Uh, email address and password to log in. I obviously don't have anything set up. I just wanted to see oh, <laughs> what email client this was. I, I don't recognize the settings or anything. So I'm not sure what email client they're using either. Could it be Geary? It's one I've used in the past. I know it's not Thunderbird. It didn't look anything like Thunderbird. If I do where is Geary, no. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure. One thing I could do to try to figure this out is go into internet. I'm going to open up, let's, let's open up the browser again. And now let me go back and open the terminal. And it's htop installed. Let's look for the processes that are running. htop is not installed. Okay, let's do it. sudo apt install htop, if I can type. And give our strong and complicated password. It is frustrating to not know what programs are actually running on the system. So. Uh, let's go ahead and full screen this and see what the uh, the browser that is running right now. Um, a lot of deep in desktop environment stuff running. But I don't see. I don't know. I see user lib browser browser. Wow. So <laughs> even the libraries are just called browser instead of like the actual program name. Yeah, let me just close that out. I don't know. Not a very good installation and in first look. I mean, typically these are, I want these to be first looks. So that's why I don't, you know, put any real effort in researching. So the only thing I can tell you guys is that you have a browser and an email client installed. I don't know what they actually are. So I do apologize about that. Let's go back to the categories. There is a music category and we have a program called music. And I believe this is Deepin's own music player. This is actually just called music version 6.0.1.91. Uh, again, this is one of the deep and desktop environment applications. And if I, well, I could click open folder, but I don't think there's anything on the system. Well, there is a music folder and it does have one thing sitting in that folder. So you can actually test out the music player in a VM. That's cool. I'm not actually going to play that. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It may be copyrighted. I'm, I'm not certain on that, but it looks really nice right? for an audio player, the layout and everything. Everything kind of looks familiar, right? You know where all the controls and everything are. I'm sure it's a fine program. So let's go ahead and cancel that. 
go back to all categories. There's a video category where we have a movie player, screen capture, voice notes, which I'm assuming is like an e-reader or e-speak um, kind of program, and camera, I guess, for webcam. But let's try the movie player, and I believe this is, once again, one of the original Deepin apps. It's simply called Movie, and it's version 5.7.6.165. And knowing that they're actual program names, I thought they were using generic names by labeling everything, but the program name actually could be movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> they write that. So if I did a where is browser, and that is actually the name of the browser. Okay, so I finally figured it out. The actual name of the web browser is actually browser. <laughs> so, so those were not generic names. Those are the actual names. The email client is actually called mail, right? So, all right, so music, the program name is actually called music video. Um, the movie player is actually called movie. So you get the idea here. I I'm not uh, crazy about that, that particular naming scheme. That's very confusing, but hey, uh, it's their distro and their desktop environment and their apps. They can name it whatever they want. It's not the worst naming scheme. Yeah, as far as open source software, there's so many bad names of programs in open source software. I won't say they're terrible names. I just will say that using such g generic names is kind of confusing. The image viewer, of course, is called image viewer. This is version 5.6.3.73. I wanted to open some images. We'll open up the wallpaper directory here and we've selected a directory. I guess I actually have to select a specific image. Okay. I see. And from here, you can actually cycle through the images in that directory. Going back to the menu system, let's go back to the graphics category. We had album, draw, and simple scan. Uh, draw, is that LibreOffice draw? It may be. I'm not sure. No, this doesn't look like LibreOffice. No, this is a program that's actually called draw. Draw 5.8.0.83. Uh, it looks like it's probably a paint program. It's what I'm guessing it is. Yeah, we could probably open uh, some kind of photo or artwork or whatever and edit it. That is confusing that they call that program Draw when LibreOffice has a program called Draw. So that's why I thought that might be LibreOffice. Simple Scan is a uh, scanning utility. Been around forever. Not too many people have the need for scanners anymore, but if you did, there it is. LibreOffice is installed on the system, but it looks like they have LibreOffice Calc, Impress, and Writer. And of course, just the generic front page to LibreOffice. Here is Draw. So is Draw actually installed? So this is LibreOffice Draw. This is what <laughs> LibreOffice Draw should look like. So the other program was a different drawing program. And if I go to About LibreOffice, let's see what version they're on. They're on version 6.1.5.2. Not the most recent version of LibreOffice, but then again, Deepin is based on Debian. I can go back to the categories. We have a systems category, and this is where you'll find your traditional kind of system apps like your file manager and control center and, and things like that, system settings. But here is the file manager, and I will say the file manager looks really good. That is a sexy <laughs> file manager. I'm not going to lie. I, I really like the look of that. And I, I would probably want a more traditional look once I started looking around. Like if I go into, I don't know, documents or whatever. Well, that's an empty folder. Right, let me go back into home. Can I actually change how it lists things? Display as list. I didn't click it. There it goes. Display as list. Can I show hidden files and directories? Because I would assume there's some hidden stuff in here that I'm not seeing. Where do I show hidden stuff? Settings, maybe? Hidden files. Show hidden files. There we go. All right. Yeah, that's kind of a more traditional look for a file browser. That's probably what I would go with instead of the big garish icons. But, you know, some people like the big icon look in their file manager. Uh, different strokes for different folks. Some of the other system tools. We, we saw the terminal earlier. Does Control-Alt-T bring up the terminal? Let's see if that particular key binding works. It does. So that is a real positive there. Can I zoom in here? What is the hotkeys to zoom in? Control plus to zoom in. I would assume control minus then would zoom back out. Let's look at system resource usage. So let me open up HTOP. Again, Deepin desktop environment is a heavy desktop environment. It typically sucks up a lot of CPU. So, <laughs> and it's using a lot of CPU, right? We're using uh, like 25%, 30% of the CPU at times. That's extremely high. But again, that's because we're running this in a VM. It, typically doesn't 
run great in a VM. RAM usage. RAM usage is actually pretty decent. 605 megs of RAM of the 8 gigs of RAM I gave this VM. So that's pretty respectable. Just know it's going to use a lot of CPU inside a VM. So uh, let's check out the kernel. So if I did a uname, I don't, let's do uname-r. This is using an older kernel, uh, LTS kernel 5.4.70 which is fine. Again, it's based on Debian, so they typically use older packages, more stable packages like the older LTS kernel there. I'm kind of curious how many programs are actually installed on the system. So if you're on a Debian or an Ubuntu-based system, you could do sudo apt list space dash dash installed to get a list of all the programs installed on the system. And of course, it'll spit that out. Of course, it won't give you a count. So what you need to do is run that same command and then we're going to pipe sudo apt list dash dash installed. Pipe that into wc space dash l to get a line count. And it says, warning, apt does not have a stable CLI interface used with caution in scripts, but it still allowed me to run the command 1686. So 1686 packages installed on a Debian-based system, I would say that's about normal for, you know, full desktop environments with a reasonable suite of applications installed. One thing I'm kind of interested in is uh, wallpapers. So let me right click on the desktop. I'm going to go to wallpaper and screen savers. The wallpaper utility, the changer, is interesting because it's almost like wallpaper changers on like my Android phone, you know, where it has this kind of slideshow effect that appears and you just, you know, go through the slideshow and you just pick a wallpaper. And uh, it's really neat. I will say the wallpaper pack is really nice. A lot of uh, nature photographs really nice clean photos though some abstract art stuff i really like the uh, the bird there uh, what we got some flying whales or something going on there uh, this particular i've seen this wallpaper before i don't know if this wallpaper pack has been available in earlier editions of deepen or if this is something brand new for 20.1 some of these wallpapers though do look familiar to me now I am going to choose a light colored wallpaper because I think I want to change to a darker theme. So I'll go with something like that. And let's see if I can change the theme. So uh, display settings. So display settings was what I was wanting to find to change the screen resolution earlier. And I searched for, I thought I searched for display here before and nothing came up. Yeah, nothing comes up. But if you right click on the desktop and choose display settings, then you will get this screen here where you can actually set your screen resolution, screen bright, brightness, uh, refresh rate, and all of that. The other things you can change from here in this little control center is you can uh, add users. So it has this tab that says accounts. This is where you can add, delete users to the system, Deepin ID. I'm assuming that's some kind of cloud service for Deepin. Uh, we have default applications. So what applications What's your default browser? What's your default text editor? Things like that. Personalization. So the themes. Right now we're using a light theme. And this is what I was looking for. The dark theme. And close that out. Yeah, I really like the dark theme. Although if I'm, it's such a dark theme, I really need a lighter wallpaper. Let's go much lighter for the wallpaper. Uh, I don't particularly like that wallpaper. That one's nice. Yeah. That has some really nice contrast, that <laughs> really bright wallpaper against that dark theme. That really looks good. Let's see what the uh, file manager looks like with the dark theme. Yeah, the Deepin Desktop environment is really beautiful. Now, one thing I will say with the Deepin Desktop environment, it, it actually looks better on physical hardware. Because remember, we are not using the fancy effects mode. We are using uh, the normal mode because the fancy effects mode would even would spike the CPU and the VM to like 100%. I, I've done it before and I can actually log out and change it. Let me reboot the system and I will try to turn on the fancy effects mode. And actually I don't need to restart the computer or, or log out or anything. It, actually right there from the control panel. If you go back into the display settings and if you go down to where we changed the theme, personalization, I changed it to a dark theme. You see window effect. We had it turned off because we were in normal mode. If you just slide that on, that will change to the fancy effects mode. And that should get us now the transparency and the blurring effects. Yeah, that looks really nice. Uh, again, I think I need a lighter wallpaper. I was trying to find a, a good balance of a light wallpaper, but not one that would 
you know, just completely blind you guys <laughs> that are watching the video. Yeah, that one right there looks good. Yeah, that's some really nice blurring. The panel is also blurred. I don't know if you guys can tell because it's a very similar background. And I think you can change the, uh, the effects of the transparency if I get back in here and go to personalization. Yeah, transparency. So we can make it even more transparent. Yeah, so it really bleeds through or we can make it less transparent. Uh, and you may want to adjust that, you know, depending on the, the kind of background you're using. I'm going to use 50% transparency. That's probably a good middle ground for most situations. I will say the Deepin desktop environment is very intuitive. You know, when you right click on the desktop, you know, you find the things in this menu that you expect to find. You have the start menu, very reminiscent of something like Windows. It's got some quick launchers over here. It's got a search panel. Uh, by the way, the bar at the bottom, the panel, if you right click on it, you want to change location. I mean, you just right click on it and you choose location and say top and it goes to the top. So it's really easy to adjust. Uh, can I drag it? I'm not sure if I can drag it or not. Let's see, we can change it to the left-hand side of the screen. That might be interesting. You know what? I don't hate that, actually. Yeah, I could get used to that. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Oh, this was somewhat of a minor release for Deepin, Deepin 20.1. Again, just keeping up with the uh, minor point releases for the Debian 10 series. But overall, I do like Deepin. I, I know a lot of people try to trash Deepin. A lot of people really fear Deepin because it is a Chinese-based distribution. People fear Chinese companies because it's a corporate distribution. There's a company behind it. People fear Chinese corporations. People fear the Chinese government. There have been claims in the past, uh, unfounded claims, that Deepin contained spyware, which was really overblown. Deepin has some web analytics, spin, and people blew that story up into Deepin was spyware. Deepin eventually got rid of that stuff because people were overblowing that story to the point it was causing Deepin some headaches. So they did get rid of some of the analytics. But for me, I trust it. I like it. It's Debian. It's stable. And it looks good. The desktop environment just looks good. It's probably, when you think of the desktop environments out there available in Linux, they are doing the best job as far as trying to win over those Windows and Mac users. Because nobody, you know, nobody's going to look at GNOME and think, man, I really should leave Windows 10 for that. You know, nobody's going to think that. You show a Windows user the Deepin desktop environment and they're just going to be blown away. They're going to want to run Linux just because of how sexy that desktop looks. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank... The producers of the show, Devin Fran, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Akami, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, David, The Other, David, Donnie, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Pick, BM, Scott, and Willie. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this installation and first look at Deepin20.1. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. I couldn't do what I do without you guys. If you'd like to support me, consider doing so. Look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.